Hey guys, so here we are in DAS 3D. I want to show you how to use the Diffeomorphic plugin so you can transfer everything over to Blender and you can do full animations and all that fun stuff uh, over in Blender. Um, I'm not going to show you how to install the plugin because everything's laid out really well on the website. Um, so go ahead and download the latest version, get everything put in, install into DAS, and come back and then we can start up here. So as you can see, I'm in Daz right now, and I have a character that I'm using for a, a feature film that I'm going to be starting up here pretty soon. And she's a mixture of, of various characters, and I'm using her right now. So you can see that you can transfer your own concoction of, of a character over. So what you want to do is you want to go into Daz, and you want to save as a scene. And then put it wherever you want. I'm going to do Blender Test. And just save it however you want it. Make sure you know where it goes. And hit Save. It's going to save for you. Now go and I don't know, however you put it into the, the menu. I just have mine as simply Blender. Um, click it. And then don't change anything. It's going to go in the exact same spot as the other file where it needs to go. And it's going to save the exact same file name that needs to be done as well. So then just click Save and let it uh, do its thing. And it'll be saved. Uh, we can come back later for poses and stuff. But make sure you export everything in the A pose. Or the T pose if you're in an earlier version of DAS. So now we're in Blender. And... After you have it all installed and everything, you'll find it over here in the toolbar. So you, you go and you click it, import your, your file, go to where it is. Um, mine is Blender Test right here. Import it. It's going to take a second to load up. Depends on your system. My PC is quicker than the iMac on getting things loaded. And that's okay. Um, okay, so here we are. We'll zoom in here. And as you can see, the character is just like it was in Daz. Um, so the first thing you want to do is click shift click everything in the hierarchy and then go here to corrections and merge rigs. And then if you want to merge the toes you can. I never do. Um, that's up to you. Uh, and then add extra face bones so you could do the expressions and visimis and all this and make all bones posable. I think that has to do also with the facial movements I'm not sure but I just add everything in and go from there because it doesn't hurt so next what I do is I go to morphs and update morph path and I want to go to and load the face units right away because that, that that's where you control the the eyebrow you can open the mouth um, move the eyes all that good stuff it, it's going to take a while to, to load it all in then you go to load expressions I don't know how to get different expressions loaded in like you purchase an expression pack in Daz. I don't know how to do that. If someone does, please comment below and tell me because that would be amazing. Um, but this loads a bunch of the, the regular um, expressions that Daz comes with. Uh, and then I also load the Vissimis right away because if you use Rigify, you can't come back and add it later. So add everything in right now so that is all there for when you do Rigify, if you decide to use Rigify. And we'll go over that in a, in, in a minute or two. Um, here's the correctives. I just click load. I, I meant to click the check mark. Um, I don't quite know what correctives do, so I never really play around with it. Um, but maybe it might help one of you guys. Maybe not. Um, as a whole, everything I'm showing you here is my process. So if I'm not covering it, I probably don't know about it, and I more than likely can't answer the question, um, but this works for me. Uh, so after that, the next thing you want to do is, this is where you decide if you want to go to Rigify, or you want to keep the character with the, the regular armature. Now the reason why you might want to stay with this armature is, like let's say you want to go to Daz, and you go to poses, let's just go to a pose pack here, I don't know, um, anything, 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 okay, Gabriel 8, so we just click this, and let's say we want her to pose like this, 
Now again, you can't do you can't transfer the facial movements over, but the body you can. So here we have her like this. So now you go up to save as pose preset and save this as you want. Blender test pose. Save that. And then if you do an animation, you can do animations here. You can't do it in the animate. You have to do it in the timeline. Um, or if you do it in animate, you have to bake the keyframes to the timeline. Um, then you just click animate range and go through the whole thing. And you can actually uh, export all of your keyframes and bring them into Blender and put them on your character there. It's totally doable. You just have to putz around with um, the axes because it doesn't... The character doesn't move uh, like it does in Daz. So all the no, what I mean is movement along the X and Y and Z axes, like arm movements or body movements, it will do. Um, but if you have it walk from A to Z, it's just going to walk in place, and you have to do that in in Blender. So you can do it, but it just takes a little bit here. But all right, let's let's current frame only. So she's posed like this. So now we go back into Blender, and then what you're going to want to do is go down here to Posing and import your pose. You go to Desktop, wherever you have it, Blender Test Pose, and you import the pose. Now, she gets the pose, but what happens is she gets twice as large. Don't change anything yet. If you're doing a pose, yes, change it all you want. You can go and just bring everything back down to one, and then she's back down to normal size. But if you're doing the animation, so um, let's say she's starting here, and then in frame 11, she is here. So now you go to save as post preset. I don't know why that didn't go. Save as post preset. Oh, Blender test animation. So now we're going to do animated range to 12 because that's how long we have it. Except that and it renders out. Um, let me just undo this get her back to her regular spot so now you go to import action and you find your blender test animation give it a second so now as you can see you can scrub it across and she moves exactly how how we had her um, but what you need to do is go into your animation tab up here I'm sorry I'm going a little fast so you're here in layout you want to go over here to animation um, and then scroll until you just gotta find where it is maybe take this off Let's see what you want to do is try to do is find the where is it big toe Sometimes these are hard to find. Oh, here, Su2. So you find the one that says like X location and all this stuff, and you would, um, if you have different keys for this section from Daz, you would delete it all because the keys would be here. So if you make her down to a scale of one, but you don't erase these keys down here, then when you move her, she grows back up to two. See? She went back up to two. So, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that all of these are just deleted. Make sure your X is on there. Or your check mark. Okay, so then you go bring everything down. And she moves, and she doesn't change. So that's why doing it in Daz and bringing it over is a little difficult because you have to remember to uh, delete the keyframes. Otherwise, like her scale changes and, and all this stuff. Um, or leave it as is and make your environments level two. It's up to you. Totally, uh, totally your 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 option. Um, 
But that's if you want to keep the armature. And then so you could still pose her any way you want. So she moves and now you want to move her arm. So make sure, I'm sorry, make sure that you have the armature clicked and then you go to power to pose mode. Click the bone you want and then you can still move it however you want it. And then as you see, it still moves with the, with the other animation in place. Um, and that was just simply hitting R and just dragging it with the mouse. Uh, you can do R, X, R, Y, or R, Z to rotate it on the exact axis, or G uh, to move the, the character around, or G, Y, X, or Z as well. Um, but let's talk about Rigify, because uh, I think if, once you see Rigify, you're going to want to really use that. Um, so let's get back into object mode. So Rigify is here in the finishing tab. And you just click convert to Rigify, and it takes a, a, a couple of seconds here to do it. And then you get your Rigify. Automatically, just you can put this in object mode and right away get rid of this armature. You don't need it. So here's Rigify. And this is how you will find animating in Blender an absolute joy. Um, it makes life so easy. So you have the armature all sitting here. So you go to pose mode. So you have things like this giant box is her torso. So if I hit G, I can move her around and her, her, her hands and her legs stay in place. I can hit R to rotate her back and forth. You have full control of her chest. See, and it says right up here what you have selected. So you can just simply move her chest by hitting R for rotate. And G moves it like this. Now let's say you want to move her hand somewhere. You hit G. Hit G to move the hand and then you move it and it can go and you can move it however you want. Now, as you can see, it's breaking up here with this, so you're going to have to go in there and adjust the, the clothes yourself. Um, I'm finding some clothes you have to really adjust and scale it up a, a few notches and some play just well. But let's go back to moving. So you can move it however you want. You're going to have to like play around to get it exactly how you want. Um, but you can get it wherever and then Obviously, you want to rotate the hand by hitting R to get that where it needs to be. Um, same thing with the legs. If you click the foot, you have full control over how the leg moves. And this is the first time I'm using um, this outfit in here. So I'm seeing that I might not want to use this outfit in Blender because there's a lot of breaking going on. Now, see, what's happening here is what I really like like and hate about Rigify. I hate it because this happens when you're trying to do like a walk cycle, a walk cycle, all of a sudden the, the leg turns into a noodle or something like that. But what's great about it is it's helping you make sure that the body is in the right um, kind of proportions. So if the, the, the leg is like this, you click the, the, the hips hit R to rotate, and you, you just move the hip around just to get it where it's more natural. And that that's everything right there. You know, you make sure you have everything recorded, and then you go over here, let's just do this, and let's bring her her leg back down. Wow, there is a lot of breakage on this outfit. Mental note, I am not using this. Um, and then let's move her hand back because we already have a keyframe. So let's move her arm down here and this one here. And let's rotate her head this way just for the heck of it. So see, now I didn't have a keyframe set for this one in the beginning, so that's why that didn't move. So let's bring her arm out here. And these are just quick motions, as you can see, nothing to write home about. But 
there's your, your, your quick animation. Do whatever you, you know. You can have her do whatever you want. You can have her head move too. So that's the basics of bringing the animation in um, to, to Blender. Um, you can do cloth simulation and um, you can move hair. You can do all that stuff that you do. Now, if you want to use um, lip syncing for um, for it, I can't show you here because um, I can only do it on my PC because you can use Papagayo and export the Papagayo file as a DAT file. So then what you'd want to do is go back up to object mode, click on the, the skin, come down here to where the Vesimis were, and you would load, click load moho, which is the .dat file, and then you would click on your file that you exported from Papagayo, and it would bring it in for her to lip, to, and, and it would lip sync everything. Um, and of course, it's just like using Animate um, or Analip from, um, in Daz. It's not perfect. You're going to have to go in and tweak things, but it's a wonderful base to start at. And um, this way you don't have to, to go and go word for word and, and, and make it. You have the basics done, and then you just go and, and just slide everything around as a tweak. Um, same thing here with the expressions. Like I was saying, you have all these different expressions. And you can do all that. It breaks if you go too far. But as long as you, you, you don't go to the negative, you're fine. But you keep everything at a, a good level. That's why Incredulous is at zero. That's why it didn't work. And that still doesn't work. But that's okay. Keep it at zero and it's fine. Um, I think I have a... Oh, yeah, you have the Vicinis here. See, one thing can change the entire outlook. You know, and then you also have the facial units. You know, you got the eyelids and stuff. Um, I don't quite know why her eyes aren't... Oh, this might just be one of those iMac things, because her eyes always show on my PC. And just to give you a little example here of what I've been doing with Blender, I'm just including just a quick, like, 40 seconds or so of my animated short film. I've started it in like the end of March, early April-ish. Uh, and that's when I started learning how to use the Diffeomorphic tool. And now we're in the middle of March or May, and um, I'm already 10 and a half minutes in of the film. And it's only going to be about 11 minutes, so I'm almost done with it. Um, yeah, and I can show, I can do another video for Cloth Sim and all that later on, too, if anybody's interested. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope this is of some help to some people um, who are looking to do this, as I've been having to kind of figure everything out as I go along, so hopefully I can help somebody out. Um, again, this is my process. And it might not really help you out because I don't know how well this does for photorealism on characters. On uh, environments, you can get complete photorealism with all the different things that Blender can do. Um, but for the skins that you get in Daz, I don't know. Because um, photorealism doesn't really interest me. Um, I care more about making anime style. So this suits my needs. And hopefully what I showed you here can help you bridge the gap too. Okay, have a great day everybody. Thanks.